Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Natasha. This is Witchcraft. Um, today I thought to bring out my jammed machine, the electric one, and we're gonna make together a drop stitch scarf. Now you wonder if we are gonna make something with the jammed, why on earth do I have the 22 pin? Well, the way I do my drop stitch scarf is by also making a small clasp that uh, allows for decoration, allows for hiding the seam of the two ends of the scarf, and allows to um, keep together the scarf in how many loops you want them to be around your neck. So the clasp will be done on the 22 needle machine. I'm going to use this yarn here this is the only yarn i use to do this kind of scarf i just like it i like it the, the the metallic sheen that comes out of it um it's a good weight it's a four and a half it's, a, it's an in between a dk and an iron weight this is the c c jet c jet in it boho spirit four and a half in color deep they have different color combination and they're all stunning so let's get cranking with the two twenty with the twenty two pin needle machine first, and then once we get to the jammet, I wanna talk a little bit about the machine as well. So to start with, we need waste yarn. Always grab a contrasting color. Cast on. If you don't know how to cast on, I will link a video down below in the description box. But basically. You start from the first needle and weave the yarn back and front all the way around. I have already a wee small ball of yarn to use as a waste yarn, but if you are working from a ball, from a, an actual skein of yarn, then just do at least five, I would say 10 rows of waste yarn. So this is the yarn I'm going to use. Is This yarn is part of the, the, the skin. This is the actual skin brand new. What I did in order for me to be uh, working it with the jammet is I put it into a cake. But at some point I came across um, a knot. So I cut the knot off and I was left with this really small ball. So I'm going to use this for the cast. I need 20, I would say between 20 and 25 rows, depending on how tight you want to make it. I would say 20 rows should be enough. So this is the moment that you want to reset your counter.
I'm just debating. I'm at 20 rows now, so I'm just debating if I wanted to use what I have left of this. Although this might bring me to way more than 25. Um, let's do 25. Guess I don't like to waste yarn, so let's do 25. Actually, it turned out pretty much perfect. This will also give you the opportunity to um, choose if you are 25 rows or maybe doing something smaller. So, 25 rows I done. Let's grab waist yarn again. Again, even here, do at least 10 rows. Give it a little stretch, grab the tails. Now, one thing I need to say about this yarn, as much as I love it, this yarn is unforgiving. So as soon as there is a slight um, change in tension, this yarn will show it. Keep that in mind. That's also why I like uh, to use this for the drop stitch scarf because obviously once you start dropping stitches, this kind of thing, I don't know if you can see it, it will disappear. So we need to close the clasp flat. So grab your crochet hook. So start from the opposite end of where you have your tail and start weaving one stitch into the other, alternating from top to bottom. Again, I have a video showing in detail this step. Mm, no, 
this seems to be all okay but we can tighten the knot Now, what um the next step step for this would be to have a little bit of a crochet edge all around and create a wee uh, loop so we can add a wee button and this will be then the clasp okay okay so I went and grabbed my white yarn and what we're gonna do is just do a wee border around this this is a little thicker okay um just thinking just to realize i grabbed an iron but it should be fine so we are going to do a single crochet border all around once and to do a single crochet you're basically going inside the stitch bringing the yarn across wrap it around the hook and pull it across the two um loops that you have i can zoom in a little bit We are going in, wrap around, pull through, wrap around, pull through. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another row coming in, but this time around, more or less at halfway around, we are going to make a wee loop. Very easy. So, And I'm just eyeballing it. I mean, I'm not doing anything special. I made five uh, stitches. Now I'm going to make three, four, five chains. And I don't want to leave it too loose so i'm gonna it's like more or less the same length as you would have stitched the second row back again and just finish up Okay, got the yarn. 
Wrap it around one more time just to create the knot. Now we're going to hide the tails and once we are done with the scarf, we are going to then measure it and create uh, and put in a button. Something like that. So that we will do at the very end. That's done. Now, let's grab the Jamit electric machine. So I'm going to use the entire skin of yarn. And I did make it into a cake because I'm using this machine. That allowed me to um, first check the yarn for any knots. They can still come up, but there is no knot in the yarn itself. Like, I don't know if, you, if it ever happened to you to find a skein that they just connected two strands of yarn in a knot. It's not that it just created itself. So there is none of that. And this also made, made it into a cake it would uh, feed more easily into the machine. So that's a piece of advice. If you have this machine, do that. So to start our drop, drop stitch scarf, we just crank, cast on normally. I don't know if you can hear this machine, but this is the normal sound that it would do because I am forcing something that should go electrically and it's not that i'm doing anything wrong it's just the way it is okay as usual we put the yarn in the yarn feeder and we select our tension Don't make it too tight because if it starts getting um, too tight on the machine, the machine will struggle. I don't need my row counter at this point because, again, we are using the entire ball of yarn. I just like to start a couple of pins before switching it on just to make sure. And here we go. Thank you.
So what happened here, and that's why I'm saying that we need to be very careful with the yarn. The yarn created one of those wee knots when it tangled up on itself. So the machine, when this, it gets to a point of too much resistance, it will shut down in the sense that this is this would still be on but obviously the barrel doesn't crank anymore so we need to really pay attention to that i didn't see it happening because it happened literally underneath the the yarn feeder so let's start again Okay, I'm almost due the end of the yarn, so I think probably another couple of rounds because you need to leave yourself enough yarn to um, cast off. Give or take. This is the this is the point where I need to stop. Perfect. Not that matter exactly at what point I stopped in the machine, but that was pretty neat. Now, I'm going to unplug my machine just because I don't need that anymore. And the cable, that's another problem. The cable, power cable for this machine it's pretty short so you need to be very close to a power supply or a socket to plug it in okay so this is the moment where we actually start creating the drop stitch um cast off in order for us to drop to drop the stitches so obviously in any other scenario you would pick up every stitch but in this case we alternate so our yarn is coming out from the last needle your first needle you leave like this and you pick your second one You leave your third and you pick your fourth. Pick up all the even numbers. You leave the fifth and you pick up the sixth. So 
So one you pick, one you leave, all the way around. I mean, if it makes it easier for you, you can pick one stitch and then just drop from the machine the following, pick the, the one after, already drop the following, it's up to you. For me, it's just an extra step and then this happens that the bloody yarn gets tangled up in the wheel teeth, so I usually don't bother. And here we go. Now you just want to do one round. So that the machine will release everything. So this is the Jamit. Um, again, would I recommend it? Maybe, maybe, but with caution, <laughs> with side notes, with small print. But if you're planning to get your first time machine, just don't, don't look at this. Or, or at least if you want to look at this, look at the manual one. No. So let's get back to our scarf. Now what you want to do is just unfold it grab the cast on edge and start cinching it once again if you're using this yarn just go slow because it's as painful as is, it is nice to look at. So just take your time with it. Because it's also very easy to break. I think the end result is worth it. So that's why I say persevere. Mm. 
leave a tail for now, just not this long because this long is just too long. And now the fun part. So we can start pinching a little bit. And start pulling. So satisfying. Yeah, before going ahead, even here, I like to make my tail manageable. And just pull and just drop all those stitches this is the only time where you are allowed <laughs> and it's fun to drop stitches and i mean it's easy enough just take your time again it, it, uh, it this is a yarn that likes to fluff up so sometimes you get fibers sticking together, but now, if you are one of the lucky ones that are able to work cotton on your machine. I'm not. I broke one of mine using cotton, so I'm not using cotton anymore. But I've seen people out there able to. With cotton, there is a project out there, I believe you will be able to find it on YouTube, that will actually allow you to make um, like a grocery bag. And with the same kind of technique of dropping stitches. That's fun. As I said, I would have loved to do that, but a, my machine just did not like. What happened here? Uh, hmm. I'm not sure what happened here. I must have pulled on a stitch somewhere. Okay. Fixing time. And I'm gonna just do this. I really have no clue where these strands come from, but it's absolutely fine. Let's tie them together. Okay, so let's bring back the other side, and like we just need to. Tie them together. That's it. As easy as that. Do it as you may. There is no right or wrong way of doing it. Just do it. Do it in a way that obviously doesn't get undone.
what you want to do is just loosely loop it three four times usually this is you're able to loop it to, to make four no, three loops loose like this or if you want it tighter around your neck then you can even stretch to a, a fourth loop And you can make them the same size or slightly different. So it's entirely up to you how you want to wear it. But that's why I also use the entire skin because I feel a scarf needs to be nice and cozy, even if it's a drop stitch one. And the clasp will allow you to keep it together. Now, I don't have um, a button. I haven't found one that I like with this scarf here. So I don't know if I have to search for some more or I need to buy one. But for the time being, At least to give you an idea. So here you would have your button. I'm so annoyed that I don't have one. I mean, I have loads, and I mean loads of buttons. I couldn't find one that I liked with this. If I'm able to find one, I'll put it on and you will see it on the thumbnail. For sure you have seen it on the thumbnail. But this is the idea. Let me know what you think. Uh, I think that 20, you said 25 um, stitcher for the clasp is the bare minimum. Considering. I mean, obviously at 20, you can still stretch it. There is a lot of stretch on it, but I think 25 is your best um, number for this. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And please, if you have not done so, subscribe. If you want, would like to subscribe to my channel, I would be very grateful. It really helps. It really helps me. In, it will enable me to keep going and to keep doing videos like this. So, thank you for making it this far. And I shall see you soon. Bye.